Hello students, this is Pathology Chapter 5, Part 1, Developmental Disorders. This chapter will cover the embryonic development of the face, oral cavity and teeth, developmental soft tissue abnormalities, developmental cysts, and developmental abnormalities of teeth. A failure during the process of cell division and differentiation into various tissues and structures can result in developmental disorders. Some may be identified clinically or by radiographic examination, biopsy, or histologic examination. Inherited disorders are different from developmental disorders in that they are caused by an abnormality in the genetic makeup of an individual and is transmitted from parent to offspring through the egg or sperm. Congenital disorders are present at birth, can be either inherited or developmental, However, the cause of most congenital abnormalities is unknown. In the third week of embryonic life, an invagination or infolding of the ectoderm forms the primitive oral cavity, which is called the stomodium. As facial development continues, the first branchial arch divides into two maxillary processes. As development continues, two pits called olfactory pits mark the future openings of the nose that develop on the surface of the frontal process. They divide the frontal process into three parts the median nasal process, the right lateral nasal process, and the left lateral nasal process. The lateral nasal processes form the sides of the nose, whereas the median nasal process forms the center and tip of the nose. Later, the median nasal process grows downward between the maxillary processes to form a pair of bulges called the globular process. This continues to grow downward, forming the portion of the upper lip called the philtrum. Most of these developments are completed by the end of the eighth week of embryonic life. The area of the palate, called the premaxilla, develops from the globular process. The lateral palatine processes, left and right, are formed from the maxillary processes. These lateral palatine processes then fuse with the premaxilla. The fusion creates a Y-shaped pattern. The nasal septum arises from the median and nasal process. The right and left maxillary processes fuse together with the nasal septum at the center of the palate. The tongue develops from the first three branchial arches. The second and third branchial arches are located just below the first branchial arch. The body of the tongue forms from the first branchial arch, and the base of the tongue forms from the second and third branchial arches. See figure 5.2 on page 150 of your textbook. Tooth development is called odontogenesis. In the human embryo, it begins about the fifth week of embryonic life and involves both ectoderm and ectomesenchyme. The ectomesenchyme is derived from neural crest cells. Odontogenesis begins with the formation of a band of ectoderm in each jaw called the primary dental lamina. 
10 small knob-like proliferations of epithelial cells develop on the primary dental lamina in each jaw. Each of these proliferations extends into the underlying mesenchyme, becoming the early enamel organ for each of the primary teeth. The tooth germ is composed of three parts, the enamel organ, the dental papilla, and the dental sac or follicle. The enamel organ develops from ectoderm, and the dental papilla and dental sac or follicle develop from mesoderm. Formation of dental hard tissues occurs during the fifth month of gestation. Dentinogenesis is the formation of dentin. Dentin is the first mineralized tooth tissue to appear. When it begins to form, the mesenchymal tissue within the tooth germ is called the dental papilla. After dentin is produced, the dental papilla is called the dental pulp. Enamel is a product of the enamel organ. Enamel matrix begins to form shortly after dentin, and mineralization and maturation of enamel follow the formation of the matrix. Amylogenesis refers to the formation of enamel. The enamel is highly mineralized epithelial tissue, and 90% of its volume is occupied by hydroxyapatite crystals. The dental sac or follicle that surrounds the developing tooth germ provides cells that form cementum, the periodontal ligament, and alveolar bone. Cementogenesis, the formation of cementum, occurs after crown formation is complete. An epithelial structure called the Hertzwick epithelial root sheath proliferates to shape the root of the tooth and induces the formation of the root dentin. Cells of the Hertzwig epithelial root sheath must break up and pull away from the root surface before cementum can be produced. Very little cementum is produced until the tooth has erupted and is in occlusion and functioning. Root length is not completed until one to four years after the tooth erupts into the oral cavity. Developmental soft tissue abnormalities include ankyloglossia, commissural lip pits, and lingual thyroid. Ankyloglossia is an extensive adhesion of the tongue to the floor of the mouth. It is treated by phrenectomy. Notice how the tip of the frenum is close to the tip of the tongue and makes the tongue create a sort of a dished out shape. Treatment is by phrenectomy when needed. Commissural lip pits are epithelium-lined blind tracts located at the corners of the mouth or commissures. No treatment is necessary. Lingual thyroid is a small mass of thyroid tissue located on the posterior portion of the tongue. It results from the failure of the primitive thyroid tissue to migrate from its developmental location in the area of the foramen cecum on the posterior portion of the tongue to its normal position in the neck. It may be removed if it is obstructive, provided the patient has other functioning thyroid tissue. Developmental cysts include odontogenic cysts, non-odontogenic cysts, and pseudocysts. Developmental cysts are abnormal, fluid-filled, epithelium-lined sacs or cavities. The most common oral cyst is the radicular or periapical cyst and the residual cyst. Developmental Developmental cysts are classified as to whether they are 
odontogenic or non-odontogenic. Odontogenic means that the cyst is related to tooth development. Non-odontogenic means that it is not related to tooth development. Cysts are also classified according to their location, their cause, the origin of the epithelial cells, and histologic or microscopic appearance. Developmental cysts can cause expansion of bone. Intraosseous cysts are cysts which occur inside or within bone. Extraosseous cysts occur in soft tissue. Cysts within bone generally appear as well circumscribed radiolucencies. They may be unilocular or multilocular. Odontogenic cysts include dentigerous, eruption, primordial, odontogenic keratocyst, calcifying odontogenic cysts, lateral periodontal cysts, and gingival cysts. Odontogenic or dentigerous cysts are also known as follicular cysts. They form around the crown of an unerupted or developing tooth. The epithelial lining originates from the reduced enamel epithelium after the crown has formed and calcified. These most commonly occur around the crown of an unerupted or impacted third molar. Radiographically, the dentigerous cyst appears as a well-defined unilocular radiolucency around the crown of an unerupted or impacted tooth. Histologically, the lumen is most characteristically lined with cuboidal epithelium surrounded by a wall of connective tissue. Treatment involves removal of the cyst. There is some risk of cystic transformation into a neoplasm. An eruption cyst is similar to a dentigerous cyst, but it is found in the soft tissue around the crown of an erupting tooth. No treatment is necessary. A primordial cyst develops in place of a tooth. It is most commonly found in place of a third molar and is most often seen in young adults and discovered on radiographic examination. Histologically, the lumen is lined by stratified squamous epithelium surrounded by parallel bundles of collagen and may prove to be an odontogenic keratocyst or a lateral periodontal cyst. Sur treatment involves surgical removal and the risk of recurrence depends on the diagnosis. An odontogenic keratocyst or OKC histologically is uh, the lumen is lined by epithelium that is 8 to 10 cell layers thick and is surfaced by parakeratin. It is most often seen in the mandibular third molar region and is very aggressive so it can move teeth and cause resorption. Because of its high recurrence rate, surgical excision and osseous curatage are recommended. It radiographically, it frequently appears as a well-defined multilocular radiolucent lesion. Remember, it has a very high recurrence rate. This concludes Pathology, Chapter 5, Part 1.